high principles and then you need to have the right strategy. Let me talk about some of those principles. One of the principles states that every habit or every goal may be sour at the start, messy at the middle, but easy at the end. So you have a goal, you want to maybe lose some weight, you want to start a new, learn a new skill, you want to make a certain amount of money for your company and all that. Um, it may not be easy at the beginning. It may be sour at the start. It may go on to be messy at the middle, but easy at the end. So you will need a lot of understanding about the timelines of goal fulfillment eh, uh, or reaching your goals. You will understand or you need to understand the timelines of reaching your goals. If you have that understanding, it ensures that you are not discouraged at the beginning. The problem with many people is that they say they are going to do things at the beginning of the year. Eh, expectations are very high. People are motivated. But what happens is that when that difficulty sets in, a lot of people fall by the wayside. They get very discouraged because they don't understand that in fulfilling goals or in reaching your goals, it may be sour at the start, messy at the middle, but it's easy at the end. Sour at the start, messy at the middle, but easy at the end. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to um, establish. The second thing I want to establish is that, you see, in trying to reach your goals, people don't rise to the level of their goals. They fall to the level of their systems. I'll take it one more time. People don't rise to the level of their goals. Uh, they fall to the level of their system. So it is not your goal that really makes the difference. It is your system that makes the difference. Listen, people don't digest food because they have a digestive goal. They digest food because they have a digestive system. People don't breathe because they have a goal to breathe. They breathe because they have a respiratory system. Let me tell you something. When you watch football, uh, in football, you have about 20 teams in the league. There is no team that has a goal to be relegated. However, every year, three teams are going to be relegated. Every year, three teams are going to be relegated. But no team has a goal to be relegated. So your goal is not what makes the difference. It is your system that makes the difference. So people want to go to the gym and work out. They have a goal. But it is not that goal that makes a difference. It is your system, the system that you put in place that makes a difference. Now, I want to give you an example. I want to give you just a, a little example. You know, we have a colleague called Bank Colley Williams, Bank Colley Williams, you know, and he shared this very lucid example of how he wanted to go to the gym and he paid for the gym member. Uh, uh, got a gym subscription, but he was not going. There were certain things just coming up. Things were just coming up, you know, things were coming up, you know, and it seemed as if there was no time. And then he went from having a goal to having a system. Mm -hmm. he, he, I think he gave some money to his gym instructor and said, you know what, any day I don't come, deduct maybe, I think it was 50,000 or so. Any day I don't come, deduct this 50,000. You can have the 50,000. The first day he didn't show, I mean, he, he, he didn't show up. 50,000 loss. The second day, he didn't show up. 50,000 loss. The third time, he didn't show up. 50,000 loss. When he realized that he had lost 150,000, 150,000, eh, it pinched him and he started going to the gym and then it became a habit for him. So, you know, you need to ask yourself, what is it going to cost me? One of the ways you know you have a system is that you must know what is it going to cost me if I don't fulfill my goal? And it must be something that is substantial, something that really, eh, would get you moving. What is so substantial? For example, a lot of people have goals. They don't fulfill their goals, but they still travel abroad for some. So you are rewarding yourself when you have not fulfilled your goals. So you don't have a system. You don't have a system. It should be something that is so intricate eh, that it is like you breathing in, that if I don't do it, I don't breathe in and breathe out. If I don't do it, I don't sleep up, I don't, I don't go to sleep and I don't wake up. It should be so intricate. It should be so intricate to you that... You should have it. So don't just ask your, don't just have a goal, have a system. Don't just set a goal, set a system. I'll share some examples with you. Last year, eh? about this time last year, I, you know, I had a goal, of course, I had a goal. And I noticed that after a particular time, I wasn't reaching my goal the way I wanted to reach my goals. And guess what I did? You know, I said I was going to lock myself up in my house for three days. Eh? So... I gave, I called my neighbor, gave my neighbor my phone, my two phones, 
And I said, you know what, lock me in this house, you know, and then don't open it until three days later. Eh? I just wanted to focus on my research goals alone. Just focus on that. Just focus on that, you know. And I told her that if I come out by, by hook or crook, I will give you five, half a million naira. And I made, I made, we signed the document. We signed the document. I will give you half a million naira. And, you know, we meant it. I meant it. Of course, I'd signed the document. So she could hold me accountable, you know. You need a system is a system that holds you accountable. You need to be accountable, you know. You need to be accountable. So did I feel like coming out before the third day? Of course, I felt like. But guess what? The door was locked. Number one. Number two, coming out would mean that I have to fork out half a million naira to somebody that, that I don't intend to ever give half a million naira, in the, in the, in, at least in the present moment, you know. So that system eh, kept me indoors for three straight days and I was able to fulfill my goal of researching. So it is not your goal that matters. It is your system that matters. It is not your goal only that matters. It is your system that matters. Okay. So that's another thing. The second thing I want to talk about, and I'll touch more systems, but the second thing I want to talk about, when people set a goal, they set a goal based on 12 months. Eh? And it's not very wise to set a goal based on, uh, the year is um, a 12 month year. You should have actually a six month year, six month. What, what, why I'm saying that you should have a six month year, why it's more effective to have a six month year is that when you set a goal for 12 months, a lot happens, a lot happens within a year. A lot happens that you never planned for. I'll give you an example. Pastors plan that, okay, my church will grow by 40%, 50%, and then coronavirus happened. Coronavirus happened. A lot of us never expected that in Nigeria, there will be full scarcity from October up until today, which means that you will spend some more time at the filling station. Do you understand? A lot of things will come up that you don't plan for. That's just the normal trend of life. So if you set a goal based on 12 months, you are setting yourself up for failure in most circumstances, because things will come up, except you plan for those contingencies. But what I'm saying, set a six-month goal eh, or have a six-month year rather than, than a 12-month year is, is so that you can plan for those contingencies. So that when those things happen, you are planning based on six months so that by June, you can reach your goal. If you don't reach your goal by June, eh, you still have August, September, October, November, December. So don't set a 12-month goal, set a six-month goal. I'll give you an example. I always set a goal for how much knowledge I want to gain in a year. Guess what? My goal is a goal to be fulfilled or achieved within six months, not within one year. So every time a month passes, in my brain, two months have passed. So in my brain, eh, we, have not, we are not at the end of January, we are at the end of February. That way, you can achieve your goals easily and regardless of contingencies that will occur. But apart from that, let me give you an example. Please, let me give you this example. This time four years ago, we were getting ready for our elections. Guess what happened? The elections were supposed to hold on the 16th of February. 16th of February. I can remember that day like I remember any unforgettable day. And guess what? I didn't sleep that night. The night of elections, I could not sleep. I mean, I was just awake walking. And at 3 a.m., the INEC chairman decided to, I mean, release a press statement that the elections were postponed at 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. Guess what? They were comedians. It was postponed from 16th of February to 23rd of February. A lot of comedians had fixed shows for fixed shows for 23rd of February. Guess what? Their shows had to be canceled. There are things that will occur. You can't plan your life based on your efficiency alone. You don't live alone. You live in a world of different people. So you plan your life based on the inefficiencies of others. You also put that into perspective. Do we understand that these comedians had to cancel, I mean, had their plans thwarted because an annex chairman decided to postpone an election at midnight by one week. So you don't set a six month goal, you set a 12 month goal. Okay. I hope that works and people understand that. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, I want to talk about what I call energy engineering, which is the most important thing. You know, I coach about 20 people who live all around the world. 
different continents. Now, beginning of the year, I'm always prepping them up and say, you know what? Tell me, come on, come on. Get, send me your goals for the year. Send me your goals for the year. And when I see all of them send their goals for the year, I see that they have a lot on their plates, a lot on their plates, just so much that they want to achieve. Eh? And it's much more that they can handle. You know, a building that has a one uh, floor foundation and that wants to erect a three floors will eventually crumble. And that's the way I see people living their lives. That's the way I see people living their lives. They want to do so much, you know. Let me give you an example. I have a client. She set a goal to learn Spanish this year. No problem. I sent her, immediately I saw it, I sent her a video on how you can learn any language in six months. One of the best videos I have ever watched. How to learn a language in six months by Chris Longsdale. Amazing genius. You know, guess what? Three weeks later, she tells me that for me, uh, when I looked at my calendar, there's so much that I have to postpone. Let me postpone um, speaking or learning Spanish till next year. And I said to her that I was going to tell you at the beginning, but I didn't want you to be discouraged. You just put in a whole lot. I want to talk about an effect I call the Warren Buffett effect, the Warren Buffett effect. A man went to Warren Buffett and said, Warren, show me how you can be so successful. Or yes, how a man can be so successful the way you have been successful. And Warren said, what are your top 10 goals? The man listed his top 10 goals. And Warren Buffett said, eh, wipe out the, 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 list, the last eight goals and make sure you have only two goals. Wipe out the last eight and keep only the first two. And he said that once you have more than two major goals, you become distracted. And when you see energy flows where att attention goes, distraction is an energy waster. Distraction is an energy waster. Distraction is an energy waster. How did I memorize the entire book of Proverbs? The entire book of Proverbs, you know, very simple. I had just one goal. Before, and let me tell you something. Before, I would have had, I would have a goal that I want to read the whole Bible in one year. And then the Holy Spirit taught me that, no, that's not the way to go. Hmm? Focus on one book. No, start with one. One, it taught me that one is the most powerful number. One, of, one is the most powerful number in this world, you know. God said the people is become one. Nothing shall be impossible for them. That you know, Jesus said, if your eye be single, one, your whole body shall be full of light. Now, if your eye is not single, your eye is evil. A double-minded man is unstable in his way. So he taught me that one is the most powerful number. One, eh? two is better than one because two become one. If they are, if they remain two, I see that they have two de desires and two goals. They are powerless. So I decided I was going to focus on just that one book, Proverbs. And guess what? The book of Proverbs runs for about three hours. Guess what? I will listen to the book of Proverbs in my office, in my car. It was just plain. It was just plain. Those were the days of CDs. I had the Bible on CDs. It was just plain in my laptop, in my office, in my car. You know, when I, when I was driving, just listen to it, listen to it. I was listening to 90 chapters of the Proverbs every day. And every day I was listening to it, listening to it eventually I was able to memorize the entire book of Proverbs. It was easy to achieve that one goal rather than having so many goals. So that's one problem. I call it singularity. I call it singularity. That's the problem I see that a lot of people have. A lot of people are singular in their goals. They are not singular in their goals. All right. Okay. So um, I want to also share what I call the Tiger Woods effect. Tiger Woods effect. You see, you have to guide your life or guard your life jealously and guard what comes in. Because as human beings, let me tell you how the human beings are wired. You know, we are wired for focus. We are wired for focus. We are wired for focus. Uh, that's why you can't love God and love Mammon, because we are wired for focus. That's why the Bible will say, if a man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him because we are wired for focus. We are not wired for multiplicity and duality. We are wired for singularity. Now, let me tell you this. Do you know why snakes are very, very percipient, or sorry, very perceptive? A snake can tell when you are afraid just by your biochemistry. A snake can tell that, you know why? Because all snakes are deaf. So the energy they should use to hear, they use it to sense. All snakes are deaf. A snake cannot hear when you're coming. They can only see or perceive you. 
But the fact that, you see, okay, how many of you know Cobams? Cobams is a music producer who was born blind. Both of us were um, students in uni. Like he studied law, I studied accounting, and I was a rapper, he was a producer. So Cobams and I would go to the studio, um, he would lay the track, I would lock the flow. And Cobams was born blind, but the energy, his ears were unforgettably sharp. He had amazing ears. Why? Because the energy he should have used to see was it was diverted to his ears. And so his ears were very sharp because his eyes were blind. What does that tell you? Albert Einstein said that energy is never created or destroyed. It's only transferred or transformed. I'll repeat it again and again. Energy is never created or destroyed. It's only transferred or transformed. Energy is never created or destroyed. It's only transferred or transformed. And I'll give you two lucid examples. You see, the Tiger Woods effect. When Tiger Woods started accommodating a lot of women into his life, his passion for golf went down because energy, the energy he would have been using for golf was diverted towards women. Energy is never created. So when you want to achieve the goal, make sure that you have enough energy stored to achieve your goals. The problem with most people that I interact with is that they don't have enough energy for that. There are too many things taking away their energy that they don't have the energy to fulfill their goals. So you have to guard your energy very jealously. You have to guard your energy very jealously. That is why a lot of peak performers are very jealous with their energy. Very, very jealous. You will see Guardiola tell you that, eh, I only know the way to the stadium and the airport. I don't know any club. I don't know the way to any club or anything. You will see Jürgen Klopp, the two most successful managers in the Premiership. You see Jürgen Klopp say that, uh, he will tell his players that, listen, when you retire, I think it was uh, Guardiola that also said that, that said that. Sorry, I'm interchanging it. Guardiola told his players that when you retire, you have time to visit all the countries of the world. You have time to um, do any, engage in any hobby of your choice. But he says that while you are a player, just focus on your football alone. Just focus on your football. Focus on your football. Focus on your football. Focus on your football. Let me tell you something. Your goals should have you. Let me tell you something. It's good to write your goal on paper. It's very good. But the best place to write your goal is on the table of your heart. I'll say it again. It is good to have your goals on paper. But the best place to have your goal is on the table of your heart. On the table of your heart. What do I mean? I mean that when you wake up, the first thing that hits your mind is your goal. When you go to sleep, you go to sleep thinking about your goal. You are dreaming about your goal. That's what we call immersion. When you are immersed with your goal, eh? If you are going to have an accident, because you are reverberating a lot of electromagnetic energy, if you, are, if you are going pursuing your goal, you are pursuing your goal, you are pursuing your goal, and something evil is about to happen, it, you will just know. That is, that is how you will be so in tune with your goal. David Rockefeller was going to ensure the Titanic, remember? But because he was so in tune with his goals, he couldn't sleep. He was just restless over ensuring the Titanic, even though it was supposed to bring a lot of money. He did ensure the Titanic and it sank in his first voyage. I don't want you to have your goals on your, on your, on your, on your notepad alone, please. It's good, but there's a better place. It's called the table of your heart. If you have to remember your goal, you don't have a goal. I'm sorry to say. It should be embedded in you. You should write it. The most important place to write your goal is on the table of your heart. It's on the table of your heart. It's on the table of your heart. Yeah. Okay. So let me go on. So many things to talk about as she does achieving your goal. Mm -hmm. So I talk about energy engineering. Please conserve your energy properly. I'll give you an example. This time last year, I was investing a lot in cryptocurrency. Guess what? So I started studying cryptocurrency, but guess what happened? The moment I started studying cryptocurrency, I noticed that I wasn't reading my books on health anymore. All my books on health, I wasn't reading them. And I wonder what was happening. Then I remember that, ah, the energy I had for books on health was diverted towards cryptocurrency. And the moment I started focusing on cryptocurrency, my interest for health went down. Do you understand the way it works? That's the way it works. So you have to guard things very jealously. You have to guard things very jealously. I had a youth copper friend in school. I mean, when I was a copper. And 
he loved listening to radio because we didn't have lights, we didn't have water, we didn't have electricity and all those things. It was a village, hard scrabble village. So it was just radio. And then he fell in love with one girlfriend, uh, Yarinia, you know. Guess what? After that happened, his passion for uh, listening to the radio just went down. One day he came to me and said, Come in. I don't know what's happening. You know, that I don't even, I'm not really driven towards listening to the radio anymore. Like before, I said, you know what has happened? There's been a sublimation of your passion. The moment that girl came into your life, it has taken your energy. Energy flows where attention goes. Energy flows where attention goes. Energy flows where attention goes. Uh -huh. And once it's got your attention, it got your energy. Whatever gets your attention has gotten you. It's only a matter of time. And you listen to this. Uh, when you give attention to a thing, you now begin to go from aversion to attraction, to affection, to addiction. I'll say it again. When you begin to give attention to a thing, when you begin to give attention to a thing, you now go from aversion, you don't like it, to attraction. You are a bit attracted to it. Eh? And then what next happened? Affection. And then addiction. Mm? So attention is very, very necessary. The attention you give a thing. That's why it's good to have singular attention, just a few things that you're looking at. Now, the second thing I will say to you is this, that the stronger your attention, the stronger your ideas, your insights, your intuition, your innovation, your invention, your inspiration, and your inquisition, the seven eyes, the stronger your attention. So a person that has weak attention is going to have weak ideas. Is going to have weak ideas. Uh -huh. Bill Gates invented Microsoft Windows, but guess what? Bill Gates will program, will be programming all night until he falls asleep on his laptop. He will wake up on his laptop and continue. The stronger your attention, the stronger your ideas. The stronger your attention, the stronger your intuition. The stronger your attention, the stronger your inspiration. The stronger your attention, the stronger your inventions. The stronger your attention, the stronger your curiosity or your inquisition. That's why when I'm walking, I take out everything. I stay away from my phone most of the time, you know? I'm giving my attention to this, just giving your attention to this, giving your attention to it so that you are fully focused. You are increasing in your energy. Kobe Bryant practiced even when his finger was broken. Even when his finger was broken, he continued practicing because when you give attention to a thing, your energy increases. What is a struggle for people becomes easy for you. It becomes easy for you. There's none of us that can't achieve great things, but you see, when you lose your attention, your greatest asset is your attention. In fact, God cannot get you without your attention. Satan cannot get you without your attention. Once Delilah got something's attention, she got something. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Whatever gets your attention will eventually get you. Guard your attention. Jealously guard your attention. The stronger your attention, the stronger your willpower. The stronger your attention, eh, eh, the stronger your willpower. If you feel weak, if you procrastinate a lot, you, you, you just need to work on your attention. Your attention is spread eh, between too many places. It's spread between too many places. It's spread between too many places. Mm. So how do I apply that to my life? In my life, I have just one goal, one or two goals, one or two goals. Eh? And if you have one or two goals eh, that are laudable, you will see that all the other things will apply to it. For example, if you have a goal, to write a New York Times bestseller, you will eventually be prosperous in life. You will eventually be famous. Do you understand? You will eventually have access to the best doctors. You will eventually have access to the best coaches. Do you understand? Everything in life is tied to one thing. Everything in life is tied to one. I told you one is the most powerful number. One is the most powerful number. One is the most powerful number. Okay. Then, um, let me talk about two more things. Two more things before I go to strategies. Two more things, very quickly. Um, I want to talk about what I call the Kobe Bryant effect. The Kobe Bryant effect. Sometimes when you want to achieve a goal, you need to surround yourself with people who have achieved that goal. People who have achieved that goal. I'll give you an example. The United States wanted to win the basketball, I mean, the, the Olympic gold in basketball, but they lost it to Spain eight years ago. Four years ago, they reclaimed it thereabout. And Kobe Bryant was on that team. Guess what, everybody? 
Kobe Bryant was waking up at 4 a.m. to practice every day, 4 a.m. to practice. Guess what happened? After a while, all the other players started waking up at 4 a.m. They never had a goal to wake up at 4 a.m., but because they were surrounded by a Kobe Bryant, let me tell you something. In my estate, I work a lot. Nowadays, a lot of people work a lot at night. They take walks. That's the power of having certain people in your environment. They push you. They push you. They're just infectious people. People who never had a goal to wake up at 4 a.m. to practice started waking up. Le- LeBron James said, ah, when I saw Kobe Bryant waking up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym, I started waking up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym. Carmelo Anthony, Jason Kidd, all of them. So what environment do you surround yourself with? I'll give you a practical example of how I apply it to my life. I have a prayer partner in every local government in Lagos State around me. Bagada local government, Surulere, Leki, um, Bariga, um, Kosofe, um, and so on and so forth. Ebu Temeta, you know. Why? Whenever, when I moved to Leki, guess what happened? I will go to House on the Rock whenever they are doing a vision. I will make prayer partners in House on the Rock. I, had prayer, I, I met friends who were prayer, prayer people. So I became, I made them my friends, prayer partners in, in House on the Rock. I did the same thing for HICC. All the churches in Lekki, I did the same thing for them. Environment eh, feeds you to achieve your goals. So the day I'm weak, they are strong. The Bible says two is better than one for they have a good reward for their labor. Woe unto him, he who is alone when he falleth and there is no other to help him. Eh? The Bible says if two are together, they have his. Well, how can one be one alone? Huh? The Bible says that, but a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Do you understand? So I created an environment, an environment of prayer. So even in my environment, I know all the parishes around. I know all their prayer programs. I know all their vigils. Do you understand? Environment works. What environment do you surround yourself? Environment do you surround yourself? Okay. Then let me go and talk about something else. Um, pruning. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, so let me just finally talk about systems engineering, like having a system rather than a goal, so that I, I now go to strategy and I round up with strategy. I round up with strategy. Now, there are three ways you can set a system. You can set a price pack, like I did, like Bankole did. I, I, I mean, I gave my neighbor, I told, I, I wrote a, I gave a written note to my neighbor. If I come out, I give you half a million naira. That's a price pack. Number two is an image pack. An image pack. You can, if, for example, you can tell people that, okay, I'm building my new house by the end of this year. Print cards and invite, set a date. Print cards that, okay, I'm launching my, my I'm launching my, I'm doing my housewarming at this date. Send cards, uh, write the dates, uh, and send to them. Send to them. When you commit yourself to a thing, when you commit yourself to a thing, uh, and people know, one of the fears that greatest fears that humans have is the fear of shame. Is the fear of shame. One of the greatest fears that human beings have is the fear of fear. And when people don't want to be ashamed, they go to great lengths to do things, you know. They can have audio money instead of real money. You know, they can post special pictures on Instagram that you know just to make people feel that I mean they are still they are part of the they are they are part of the Joneses and all that. So you can use shame as a motivator rather than use shame as a demotivator. So I give an example. You say you want to build your house by the end of this year. Print cards about the housewarming. Send it out to your 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 your, your most bitter enemies so that they, if you fail, they can mock you very well. Put it on Instagram, you know. You know what you are doing? You are motivating yourself eh, using the shame paradigm that you don't want to be put to shame. So you are motivating yourself. You don't want to be put to shame. You are motivating yourself. You don't want to be put to shame. You are motivating yourself. That's one thing you can do. It's called what we call an image pact. So the first part is price pact. The second part is an image pact. The third part is what I call an accountability pact. An accountability pact. Eh? Human beings are also, listen, human beings are instruments of accountability. I was at a night vigil yesterday. We had prayed for about three hours. Huh? A child was running to the altar and she was going to climb the altar. And I, I love to observe children. 
Before she climbed the altar, you know what she did? She looked back to look at her mother. She looked back to see if her mother was looking at her. She knows that her mother will hold her accountable. So when she saw that her mother was not looking at her, eh, the child had this mentality that if my mother is not watching, I can go ahead. But if people are watching me, I can't go ahead. I can't go ahead and do it. I'll give you an example of Steve Harris. Steve Harris says the reason why he has been able to maintain a healthy relationship with his wife is that he knows that if he messes up, eh, Fela Duroteye will punish him. And those are people that have a strong grip over his business and his life. Fela Duroteye can make a tweet that can destroy his business if he just wants to because he mentored him from the scratch. You understand? So we are instruments of accountability. So who are your accountability partners? Who are your accountability partners? Mm -hmm. There's a lady that I coach. I told her that, man, any day that you falter, I will do a YouTube video about you. You know what she did? She, she left my coaching community totally. She left my coaching community totally. She, she blocked me on WhatsApp. Eh? She blocked me on WhatsApp. Eh? And she stopped picking my calls. And because she knows that Komi will do it. And she knows that Komi, is, Komi pushes people very hard. He can push people very hard, you know? So we are instruments of accountability. She didn't want to be held accountable. So, you know, she just stylishly just jackpot from my life, eh? you know? So who are you? Who is your accountability partner? Who is your accountability partner? Eh? So what I want you guys to do, can you just take a sheet of paper right now and say, okay, if I don't meet my goals for this year, what is it going to cost me? Some of you, your, what, what's your greatest prize or reward is that you have said, I mean, I'm going to travel this year or I, I'm saving for my traveling or, or I'm going to buy myself X, Y, Z or this car or this suit or this, this or this, that. You know what? You must tell yourself that if I don't reach my goals, I'm not going to reward myself. If I don't reach my goals, I'm not going to reward myself. And then find an accountability partner. There's nobody who cannot find an accountability partner. There's nobody. There's nobody that cannot find it. And you see, and you see, everybody needs a coach or an accountability partner. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs one. So you find people that are very strict, people that will never forgive you. You have friends that even if you don't reach your goals, uh, they will even clap for you. You don't reach your goals, or they'll clap for you. They'll clap for you that you didn't reach your goals. But you have friends that will push you. Those are the kind of people you should make your accountability partner eh? and tell them that, you know, if I don't do this, you know what? Don't release this thing to me. Keep this. Don't release it to me. You know, it must pain you. We are instruments of pain as well. I'll talk about pain management a little bit. I'll talk about pain management. We're instruments of pain as well. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make sure that I give a lot of practical real life examples that can sink this message home, that can sink this message home. Okay, I want to now talk about um, strategies, strategies eh, to fulfill your goal, to reach your goal. When I wanted to have a strategy, I mean, when I wanted to develop myself in neuroscience, neuroscience, eh, what did I do? Very simple. Uh -huh. Let me give you an example. When I wanted to improve my reading habits, eh, there was a strategy I used to help me. It was a strategy that was a workable strategy eh, on how to read. It's called write as you read, recall as you read, recite as you read. Write as you read, recall as you read, recite as you read. Mm? That strategy, okay, let me give you an example. Do you know that if you want to learn Spanish, there are 200 most common Spanish words, 200. If you learn the 200 most common Spanish words, do you know that you can speak 50% of Spanish? If you can learn the most common, the 200 most common Spanish words, like go, come, eh? good morning, eh? what, where, how, why, do you understand? All those blue words, the most 200 most common words. And let me tell you something. If you learn, guess what? Do you know that if you learn 10 words a day, in 20 days, you have learned 200 words. Can you see strategy coming in now? that you will just want to learn, for example, the English language, guess what, everybody? The English language has over 100,000 words, but guess what? There are only 2,000 most common words. And if you know those 2,000, you can speak 80% of English language. 
So let me tell you something. Anger is a word in English language. It's a common word. But guess what? There are other words. Wrath, indignation, rage, fury. Eh? Those are, those are words that you don't need for now. You don't need for now. You don't need it. You don't need it. So just learn the basic. Now, that's, I'm, te I'm telling you, I'm teaching you strategy now. Strategies to learn Spanish in, 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 um, in 30 days. So you may have a goal, but your strategy is wrong. I'll give you two examples. A woman came to me for coaching. She was having a lot of bad dreams. And... She couldn't stay in a house alone. She couldn't stay in a house alone. She was having a lot of bad dreams. And I said to her, don't worry. I know why you're having bad dreams. Eh? You spend more time thinking about your bad dreams than your good dreams. I asked her, have you ever had a good dream in your life? She said, yes. I said, okay, take a sheet of paper. Now write down the best dream you have ever had. She wrote it down. I said, have you had a dream that is as good as this best dream you have ever had? She said, yes. I said, write it down. Dream number two. I said, can you remember just one more dream? Just Three, three, just so you have done one, two, you are doing well. Just remember the third dream, very good dream that you had. She said, yes. So she wrote down dream number three. I said, no, very good. I said, when you wake up in the morning, read these three dreams out loud. Read it to yourself out loud. Read each one five times. You can do it in less than 10 minutes. I said, if you remember your good dreams regularly, first thing in the morning, because the first thing you do in the morning is very powerful. It has what we call a reverberating effect a reverberating effect. The Bible talks about the power of the morning. The Bible says he wakes my ears to hear every morning to, eh, and he gives me the tongue of the learning that I may speak a word in due season to him that is weary. In the morning is a reverberating time. It's a very infectious time. That's why the Bible says weeping men joy for a night but joy comes in the morning. Mornings are very powerful. First thing in the morning. First, your first 20 minutes in the morning should be very decisive. It should be very intentional. Guess what? This is how my dear uh, mama did this. Uh, my dear grandma, eh? she followed this principle and she stopped having bad dreams because she was focusing on bad dreams and whatever you focus on amplifies. Energy flows where attention goes. If you give attention to bad dreams, energy will flow with bad dreams and you will have more energy to have more bad dreams. So I gave her a strategy. You have a goal, but maybe I should coach you, you know, so you can meet Kike. There's a, there's a very enterprising lady, eh? very beautiful too, but she's married already. Eh? So her name is Kike. Just, uh, uh, just send her a chat. Eh? If you want me to coach you, she will tell you how much it will cost. Okay. So let me go on. Eh? Let me give you another guy. Another guy came to me. He had the fear of public speaking. I said, no problem. Who is your, your best public speaker? Who is the most audacious public speaker you have ever had? Is it Ganifa Way? Me? Is it? He said Martin Luther King. I said, very good. Eh? I now downloaded some Martin Luther King videos. I have a, a, a dream speech. It's 10 minutes, five minutes. I said, when you wake up in the morning, eh, listen to it three times, 15 minutes alone, listen to it three times and do it for 30 days. I said, in 30 days, your fear of public speaking will be destroyed if you follow this principle. He did it and today he's speaking boisterously to crowds. Why? Strategy. Your goal can be right, but you need the right strategy. Your goal can be right, but you need the right strategy. You need the right strategy. Uh, okay, so uh, having said that, uh, let me just stop here and then open the floor for questions. Thank you very much, everybody. Wow. <laughs> My chat has been buzzing. That was like super duper whooper amazing. I can see everybody glued. Before we open the floor, for talking, I can see mind blowing. Kemi, me, I don't understand. Kemi is looking for accountability partner that is writing 500,000 naira check, and you can't give me. I will make sure your house is barricaded. Oh, dear, Nija Denny, this is not fair. Oh, so please, in 2023, I'm your accountability partner. I will ensure you don't leave the house. Very like I've been writing and writing and writing it. It's really amazing. There was, he said a lot of things. There was something he said that energy cannot be destroyed. It's only transferred. I let that thing in kind of like a comical um, form. I have this friend that was always quarreling with her husband. Like they quarrel over everything. The price of two, they quarrel over everything. Why would the sun rise this way? Things you don't have control over. She now came to me when she was turning 40. And she was like, you know, I've told my husband, 
this is my energy. I will use it for something else. The energy I used to quarrel with him. From now that I'm turning 40, I will use that energy to make money. You know, she was actually angry when she was saying it. But when she left me, I was like, it's true. The energy I used to quarrel with people, I can't use that energy for something else. Because energy is not destroyed, it's transferred. And I just wanted to bring this home to us that there are a lot of things we waste our energy on. Just try and be constructive. Since I got the understanding, even though it was like somebody just talking, I argue less. I will tell you I do not have energy for argument because I realize that I'm just wasting constructive energy. Now, <clears throat> coming before I open the floor, you said so many things and everybody's just wow, wow, wow. The way I'm seeing the wow is something else. There's something I've heard in some of your sessions that I would really love for you to just touch on a bit, maybe for like five minutes, six minutes, less, I don't know, since I'm putting you on the spot. Now, this amazing man that you are hearing memorized this book of the Bible, did this, did that, neuro this, at some point in his life, and he's public about it, so I can speak with him on it, because I know a number of us, this will resonate with us, is actually, been so depressed that it was suicidal. Am I correct? Right. Yeah. 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 Of course you are. Dude. So, can you just um share with us? Because I know every human being goes through this. It gets to a stage in your life that you just feel like it's not working. You want to throw in the towel. How do you handle? Because we are talking about goal settings right now. Oh, just set two goals. It sounds like very interesting. All I have to do is cross off the first state. But when you get to the stage that it looks like nothing is working, it's not working all. People are praising you. I have people like that. I've gotten to that stage in my life also at some point when it felt like everybody's telling you you are doing well. But inside you, you are not feeling like, like what is all this about? So how do you handle that? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Eh? Thank you very much. So this was what happened there. Eh? Um, what God told me was that there are seven pillars I want you to build your life on. There are seven pillars I want you to build your life on. If you increase in those pillars, every other thing in your life will take care of itself. Every other thing in your life, your relationship life, your finances, your emotional life, every other area of your life will take care of itself. So now he showed me like, like a bucket, eh? a bucket like of filled with dirty water and he said you see your mind is like this bucket filled with dirty water so all you see is darkness and suicidal thoughts uh? and he says that assume that this bucket has 500 verses of suicide in it that's why it's full he says okay when you memorize 500 verses in the bible eh, you would have emptied the 500 verses of suicide with 500 bible verses so the bucket will go from a very dirty bucket to a very clean bucket so start memorizing scriptures start memorizing scriptures start memorizing scriptures so I went from one verse a day, two verses a day, memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. And I was consistent. I, I started with five minutes alone. I told you, every habit is sour at the start, messy at the middle, and easy at the end. You know, you can start small and build up, start small and build up. I started small, you know. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very strong progenitor for atomic habits, you know, little, little habits, little habits, you know. So after memorizing one chapter, one verse, 10 verses, 20 verses, 30 verses, I mean, not, a Proverbs has 900 verses. So by the time I'd memorized the book of Proverbs, I'd done more than 500. I mean, my life, my life just changed dramatically. I was very happy, very excited person, you know. Um, my life had changed. I mean, my life had just totally changed. And so, you know, I just got from the total, somebody who needed a lot of help to people that people were coming to me for help that are ah, coming, you know, parents who come to me and say, I mean, um, can, can you, I, I, my, my child needs to hear you. Um, everybody started coming to me and said, okay, I need to hear you. I need to I, I come and preach in my church, come and preach and come and speak at the Lagos business who come and do this and do that. You know, so I learned one principle in life eh, that life, eh, um, life above vacuum. If you are putting in good stuff. Now, listen to this, eh, to me, you know, very powerful. I spoke about the seven pillars. Mm -hmm. So pillar number one, Holy Communion. And just told me that take the Holy Communion every day. Pillar number two, fellowship. Don't miss Christian fellowship. Always fellowship. Pillar number three, prayer. Don't miss your prayer time. Pillar number four, Bible study. Don't, miss, don't play with your Bible study time. Pillar number five, kingdom service. Work, work in a department, serve in a department. Pillar number six, giving. Make sure you're giving, 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 giving. You know, pillar number seven, fasting. Don't play with fasting. Now, he told me that if you do pillar number one very well, 
pillar number two will come out effortlessly. If you commune very well, you'll feel like fellowshipping. If you fellowship regularly, you'll feel like praying. If you pray regularly, you'll feel like studying the Bible. If you study the Bible regularly, you'll feel like serving me. And uh, you feel like preaching. If you do a lot of that, you'll feel like giving, finance, finance, financially, that is. And if you do that, you'll feel like fasting. So he told me that the seven pillars are tied to each other. Uh, and he told me that, see, if you increase in these seven areas, other areas of your life will be getting better and brighter and brighter. Um, so I tell people, life is like a machine. Just understand how the machine works. If you understand how the machine works, that, that, that's why I, I can never go to sleep afraid. I'm very confident about every a, a, any, any situation, any circumstance, because I have the keys. I have the keys. I have the keys. You know, So I don't see myself as something that anything can move me. Nothing. I know what to do if push comes to shove. I know what to do. And that's why I don't play with things like prayer. And that's why I, I jealously, you can't find me missing church service. It's not possible because I know what it does. Now, guess what? Um, to me, my seven pillars may not be the seven pillars of Ariana Huffington, may not be the seven pillars of Shaquille O'Neal, may not be the seven pillars of Imran Khan, may not be the seven pillars of Marina Abramovich, may not be the seven pillars of Djokovic. Guess what? Djokovic's seven pillars may be just practice every day, drink a lot of water, and maintain a steady diet. That, that may be his seven pillars. I mean, sorry, that may be his, his own pillars. But I tell people, listen to this, uh, to me, you know, please. Eh? I tell people that in life, if you find your strength and feed your strength, your weaknesses will shrink. If your strengths are increasing, your weaknesses will be shrinking. I'll, I'll take it again. If your strengths are increasing, your weaknesses will be shrinking. And I tell people, my, my students, I tell them that you can use your strengths to eat up your weaknesses. Your strengths can eat up your weaknesses. Your strengths can eat up your weaknesses. Your strengths. I'll give you two examples, two, minutes, two three examples. Mm -hmm. There's a woman in the Bible. She was very generous, very generous, but she was barren. So her strength eh, was that her strength was that she was very, very generous, but her weakness was that she was barren. This woman was generous to a point that she was generous to a prophet. The prophet said, what should I do for you? Gehazi said that she's barren. He said, don't worry, by this time next year, she'll have a child. The woman's generosity wiped out her barrenness, wiped out her barrenness. But you know what? I have weaknesses in my life. But you know what? When I see my weaknesses, I smile because I know that as I continue to increase my strengths, if I'm reading more books, more books, more books, eh? if I am increasing in my prayer life, if I'm increasing in my Bible study life, guess what? It's going to eat up my weakness. It's going to eat up my weakness. I'll give you two practical examples in my life. Two practical examples. Two practical examples. So to me, you know, about seven years ago, I was more of an etiquette teacher. The kind of women I was attracted to were not attracted to me. The kind of women that were attracted to me, I didn't like them, you know, because I was a teacher. So I, it's for, most of the people that were attracted to me were all these teachers, all these primary school teachers. Do you understand? Or oh, they bear, or oh, they bear. To me, you know, or oh, they bear, or oh, they bear. I'm, I'm telling the truth. The Bible says the truth will set me free. I'm telling you. Then the kind of girls I was attracted to, they were not attracted to me, you know. So you know what? Guess what? God told me about this principle. That's when He taught me this principle. He said, "Don't worry." He said, "Don't worry about it. Just focus on your strengths." Eh? Focus on your strengths, focus on your strengths, focus on your strengths, focus on your strengths. So I just continued. Then I started to evolve from just an etiquette teacher in school, in classrooms, to training companies, to training banks. Then we came up with neuroscience and then things like SOA and all these things. And then I started attracting different kinds of people into my life. Do you understand? Eh? Uh, different people into my life. Eh? Different people into my life. Kemi and Shamu, uh -uh. You want to try? Uh -uh. You see the kind of women that are in my life now. Uh, the kind of women I'm, that, that I'm attracted to and attracted to me. My life, she have changed. She have changed. She have totally changed. You understand? So, on a more serious note, eh, you, I, you, I can share so many practical ways that can, you can use your. Let me share one more with you. I had a, I have a very sweet tooth. I love sugary things, but a lot of people don't know that I'm a very, very, very sugary. Um, a sugar addict. So I used to be a sugar addict, but I apply the same principle again. For every weakness you have, to me, you, know, you have a strength that can wipe it out. I'm telling you, for every weakness in your life, there's a corresponding strength that God has in, in, that God has installed to wipe out, to wipe out your weakness. Huh? There's a corresponding strength that God has put to wipe out your weakness. So guess what? 
Come in like sugar. Do you know what, Tumenino? I'm not lying to you. In 2015, I was drinking five cans of Maltina every day. In 2015, five cans of Maltina every day. Five cans of Maltina every day. But guess what? He told me that, listen, you, your weakness is that you love sugar. Your strength is that you love to fast. He said, just continue fasting. Then I continue fasting, continue fasting. Guess what? I just noticed that my appetite for sugar began to go down. My appetite for sugar began to go down. My appetite for sugar began to go down. It got to the point that I went six months without taking a drop of sugar, six months completely without taking a drop of sugar. My sugar intake is totally down now. Do I take sugar once in a while? Once in a while, but it's totally negligible, totally negligible. And I do medical checkups regularly. So I know that my sugar um, um, level is totally negligible. I'll share one more with you. I'll share one more example with you. Um, I, um, how do I, how do I, how do I relate this one now? Uh, okay, let me, let me, let me give this one. Um, there are a lot of entertainers, a lot of entertainers eh, that have one bad habit or the other, one bad habit or the other, you know? So, so, so some of them, it's, they have a nasty women's habit, you know, they have a, some of them have a smoking habit and all that. For R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly today, R. Kelly was a musical genius, a musical genius, musical genius. R. Kelly wrote songs for Celine Dion for, he has written songs for Michael Jackson, written songs for virtually everybody. But he also had a very sex, I mean, sexual, I mean, he has a very, you know, very indecent sex habit, you know, exploiting women, you know, holding them against their will and all that. So R. Kelly got to a point that his weaknesses, it began to eat into his strengths. That today he's in jail. He can't even perform and record music like before. What that tells us is that if you don't increase in your strengths, you are going to increase in your weakness. And if you increase in your weakness, your weakness will eventually swallow and eat up your strengths. Your weaknesses will eventually swallow and eat up your strengths. They will eventually swallow and eat up your strengths. Mm -hmm. They will eventually swallow and eat up your strengths. So let me share the example I wanted to share. Too many new. Many years ago, I was very difficult to work with very difficult to work with because, you know, I just had this standard of perfection. And, you know, when people, I mean, so I used to sack, sack my staff, you know, I was an etiquette teacher. So I had etiquette teachers in, I had about five etiquette teachers in my payroll, five etiquette teachers, but I was sacking teachers every now and then. You know what, to me, let me confess to you. Let me give you serious confession. Guess what? There's a particular school like coach is owned by the wife of the deputy governor of Kwara State. So I sent a teacher to the school and the moment the teacher entered, you know what they said? They said, ah, ah, you are a new teacher again. They said, how many times are you guys going to change teachers? And then the teacher came back to me and said, look at me, this is what they are saying about you, that you change teachers every now and then. After a while, some schools said, we can't work with you. You change teachers too much. It's affecting our students. They keep on seeing new faces. Guess what? It was a weakness I had. It was a weakness I had. But guess what? Eh? I also had a listening ear for feedback. I never waited for people to complain about me. I, I used to, I would go to people and say, what do you think I'm doing wrongly? What do you think I'm doing wrongly? What mistakes do you think I'm making? Now, that listening ear eh, made me to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to have a relationship manager. So I'm not going to talk to the this, this staff. The relationship manager, a woman that knows how to talk to people very well, will be the one. So she, she, I talk to her, tell her what I want, then Adekomi will say a thing in a particular way that, you know what? This guy is just totally irrelevant. So for example, I say that the church in Nigeria is a criminal organization. It's a sophisticated criminal organization. Now, some people will put it in a different way. But Adekomi will just say, well, the church is a criminal organization and I have facts to prove it. You know, so, and I got a relationship manager mm, that knew how to say things in a more placative way. So I was able to use my strength listening ear to wipe out my weaknesses. Eh? And then we have had 
teachers that have worked with us for four years nonstop. It had never happened before. After three months, they were gone. A term. They were gone. But we have had teachers for four years nonstop. We have had teachers going term in, term out, and all that. So, so many, you know, in answer to your question, hmm, when people have challenges, they have to look, they should just have to do a, a, a broad spreadsheet of their strengths, their weaknesses, their strengths, and then make sure that we are building. So, it's not just enough for they commit to say, okay, I'm reading 500 books a year. I must improve and increase so that it, the more my strengths increase, my weaknesses decrease. Because if those weaknesses don't decrease, eh, they will eventually increase and eat up my strength. So if you can never say I have arrived. If you are not increasing in your strengths, you are increasing in your weaknesses. And if you are increasing in your weaknesses, they may eventually overpower your strengths and wipe out your strengths, just like we have seen in the case of Robert Kelly. So many know over to you. Wow, very amazing. You know, very strong points there. And I can see the chat room buzzing and buzzing. One of the key take homes from me there is whatever your fruit is, watch your seed. When you were talking about the thoughts, replacing the thoughts, it's just seed. Be able to change your seeds if you want to see the fruits change. And I really love the fact that you didn't make it dogmatic like, oh, so these are the seven pillars. Guys, please, I hope you caught that. That's why I'm re-emphasizing it. The fact that it's working for Kami does not mean that it will work for you. Know thyself. What is your strength? Because a lot of times we get um, caught up with this dogmatism. Seven practical steps to break through. Three steps to financial kinikon kinikon. And it's not working. And we're getting frustrated. What is your own strength? What are your own pillars? If you're not taking anything... I think we lost her there for a minute. Can you hear me? My, on my other system, I'm trying to connect back. I have to join on two systems just to do the drama. Annette, can you unmute your mic and ask your question? OK, Ma, thank you. Thank you, um, Coach Tommy. My mind is waving. I, in fact, I feel like I've been flogged. <laughs> Well, it's good blogging. Thank you so much. So I have asked um, a question on the chat group. And so since I'm talking now, I think I will just ask both. One, I said, hello, Dr. can you hear me? Loud and clear. OK, thank you very much. I said um, the Kaidalud effect. I don't know what I was expecting to hear, but I just want to be sure. I'm taking notes. I just want to be sure I got it correctly. Is it all about the points that you made on singularity? Is that the type that would defect? Uh, okay, so let me hear the last statement you made. What, what are you saying about Tiger Woods? Is it what? The Tiger Woods effect you yes. shared about. Is, yes. is it the point on singularity, focus, less distractions? Is that what the Tiger Woods effect is about? No, I said that when his passion for uh, when his pleasure for women went up, his passion for golf went down. So the the, the you see the the he, his strength was okay, great golfer. His weakness was that he was reckless with women. So after a while, when the scandals broke out, he began to eat into his he couldn't give the same attention to golf, and he has not he has he has not recovered. He's yet to recover from that even up till today. So I'm saying okay. that life is about energy. When you give energy to something, the, the alternate things suffer. Okay, okay, I got that. Okay, so I also had another question. So maybe I'll just ask now. And this one is about me directly. So I have, I don't know what to call it, but I think it's a challenge. With regards to setting goals, yes, I can set goals and targets for myself. And then I happen to also be involved in other people's lives at different levels for different reasons. But I find out that I'm better able to achieve the goals I set with regards to other people the other people in my life, family and all of that. But, and I'm less able, so I'm struggling with achieving my own personal goals 
but I'm meeting, for example, today, all the things I set out to do today, I have done all that concerns any other person except that it concerns me. Well, thank God I made it for the webinar. So I've been up and about all the, you know, doing every other thing, but I haven't been able to sit down, to settle down to do the things I want to do for myself. And it's not a today thing, it's something that I find reoccurring. So I don't know if there's anything you can say that can help me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from what I see, maybe I'm sure that your energy is being diverted to other, other, other avenues or areas. That's why your energy is not diverted to other avenues or areas. That's why you don't have the same energy to fulfill your goals. If you give me a specific example, I can help you. But generally speaking, most of the time, the person is energy. People don't have sufficient energy for their goals. And then secondly, um, it could be um, they, they don't understand the right principles. They don't understand the right principles in fulfilling their goals. Uh, and then mm -hmm. finally, um, they don't set systems. They don't have systems. Mm? Mm -hmm. They don't have systems. Mm -hmm. And I told you, I spoke a lot about systems, having a price pact or an image pact or an identity pact, you know. And then finally, um, they may have the wrong strategy. They may have the okay. wrong strategy. Okay, no said. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, right. thank you. Okay, Bumi, can you unmute your mic and quickly add to please? If you have any yes. questions, we might yes. probably just take two more because of commission. Okay, yes. Okay, please, can you hear me? Yes, we Loud can. Okay, good evening once again, sir. Thank you so much for the session. Amazing. So I just wanted to add to what Annette said. So I I know Annette and we connect on that level because we are the kind of people that are very willing to serve. So when you talk about volunteering, we are like the top volunteers when it comes to, so when it comes to service, serving people, it comes very natural to us. And because of that, we don't joke with people's assignments. So when an assignment is committed to us, it is like, we have to do this, we have to go for it. And a lot of times, for me personally, I now see that people's assignments are so topmost on my head. I'm thinking that, oh, no, I, I don't want to fail this person. Oh, I've committed myself to this. And at the end of the day, it's now so difficult to focus on my own work. I'm learning to manage that. But I don't know if you have something to say to that that will help better. I would really appreciate it. Because sometimes somebody has said that it's like you don't have enough self-respect for yourself. That's why you focus on people's goals and you don't have it enough time to focus on your own goals. And I've heard a lot of things around that area, but really, I don't know how to separate myself totally from service because I know this is who I am. It's easy for me to serve. Okay. So I don't know, I just want to hear what you want to say. Okay, two things, there are two options. Number one is either you begin to um, recalibrate uh, and pivot your life towards having a career towards serving other people. So if that's where your passion is, if that's where you have a comparative advantage, uh, you may want to begin to pivot towards that area. Uh, um, for example, I love what I do. And so if I was working as an, account, an, an, an accountant, uh, of course, naturally I may be, I may procrastinate in accounting because I don't have a natural flair in that area compared to what I do. That's number one. So you may want to pivot and just focus on what you love. And I want to let you know that there are people who have succeeded very well by doing so. They just decided that, listen, uh -uh, look at Omoni Oboli. You know, she, she got a job, very good job in an oil and gas company, resigned. Her family members thought that she was mad. She went into acting and today, because she loved acting, but she couldn't, she said that this oil and gas is not me. No matter how much you are going to pay me, it is not me at all. So you, can, you may want to pivot. The second thing is that you may also want to say that, let me reduce this number of volunteering and service so that I can have more energy because energy is not created or destroyed. It's only transferred or transformed. So every human being has a particular amount of energy to fulfill goals. However, if something else, or if there are things that are taking the, uh, uh, yeah, gulping that energy, you may not have sufficient energy to fulfill your goals. So those are the two options that are open to you. And then you should just go ahead and see what, which one works best for you. And you can gradually uh, decide to pivot or gradually decide to uh, reduce volunteering so that you can focus more on your 
your um, goals. And then you can also try to apply some of these things that we have discussed. You know, if you are not performing as well as you need to perform at work, set a price pact, you know, set an image pact, set an identity pact, you know, set an identity pact. Or, you know, some of these things that we have spoken about, you know, just try to practically apply them. Make sure that your strategy is very good, you know. So whatever it is, if it's team building that you are not doing well, Read the top, top five books on team building. I have a book club that uh, publishes or sends out top five books in 20 most important categories of life. You may join, but you don't even have to join. You can, on your, your, your own, do research and find top five books. And how did I discover a man that knows how to, uh, how you can learn a, a language in six months? I went on, on, on the internet and looked for it. I went on YouTube and searched for Chris Longsdale and all that. So. You, you need to also make sure that your strategy is right. And how do you do that? By finding people who have done it and finding out their strategy. Wow. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. As we round up this evening, and I like the notes that um, Komi is ending up with, even though I won't allow him to <laughs> go that route. So I'm a proud member of Geek Club. So I will say, join Geek Club. Kika, please, can you drop the link, the handle there? See, guys, this is a new year. We are talking about, and I'm being very practical here. You guys have heard him. You've heard the wow. And thank you so much for the vulnerability and the practicability you put into this. And I'm sure that's why everybody could connect. Thank you for telling your stories. So the truth is, we are all on a journey. And there is, <laughs> Kevin says that I'm the class captain of book club. I don't know this class captain that Kevin just decided to give me this. Yeah, so Kevin and I are equally both members of the Geek Book Club. Yes, I run read, and I'm equally a member of the Geek Book Club. You just have to be deliberate about your life in this new year. There is no two way about it. One of the things Kami told us is, there is no vacuum in life. And that's the truth. If you are not doing this, you are doing that. It's as simple as that. And he really broke it down 10 minutes every day. I mean, how complicated can that be? And put in the consistency there as um, Kike dropped in the chat. Kike, please, can we have it? People that are going to watch the replay, would equally see it. There are different categories here. There is no way we can get to where we are going to without the right knowledge. That's just the bottom line. We, we let us not kid ourselves. So I'm advocating here, thou must join book club. You need, you, you honestly need it for your growth. And it's not overwhelming. You're learning a little here, a little there, and gradually you're moving. Komi, thank you so, so very much. I know how very, very important your time is. Now, you spoke about, and I'm putting you on the spotlight again, you know me now. You spoke about coach and mentor, and I know you are very proud of your mentor. I tell people, please, don't follow anybody that does not have a teacher. Do not follow. I, I can proudly tell you that I submitted myself to Kami because when I entered the class and I saw somebody that said he has mastered how to read 500 books a year, I said, totally, I first in fast you say, it's more go buy for market. And I'm like, no, this is my ogre in this area. And honestly, it's something I've not regretted. And working with Komi, I keep hearing him say, oh, I learned from this person. This is my mentor. This is my coach. This is my this, this is my that. You can't be too big to learn from somebody. The day you think that you're too big to learn from somebody, that day you started dying. So coming as we round up this amazing session, because this is a new year, and I know a lot of us need to do a lot of things differently, which is the seed part. We need to be able to change the seed in our heads, in our minds, like you said about the person having the bad dreams. Can you just please be thinking about good things? But if you don't have any good thing to think about, that's the problem. There are people that evil has become good to them because that's the only thing they see. I was speaking with someone and 
it was um, something that has got to do with ethics. And while we were talking, the guy was like, ah, man, you are the first person that will tell me that this thing is bad. Like I was shocked. Like, ah, you go like, you don't know this is bad. A full grown man. I'm speaking with him. I saw he was genuinely in the dark because of the circle he was moving in. It's a circle where everything is blood, you know, anything goes. So please, can you tell us a little bit about coaching, mentoring, environment, that environment that you said we can create? And I agree with you 100%. Just in five minutes, we will wrap this up. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, yes, everybody everybody should have like a coach or an accountability partner. Um, I think it's necessary. I have a coach as well. I, I mean, I talk about it a lot. You know, I call her every now and then, you know, carry her along whenever I'm doing anything, you know um she she corrects me if, she, if i do a thing that she feels like i'm not coming this is this is the wrong method or this what you're doing is not right you know i would listen and usually i think that you need you need those people in your life you know and you see when people get to a point where nobody can talk to them they, they that's that's where men get on a destructive path you know when you see great men fall every great man that fell Got to that point in his life so you need you need a whole lot of that in your life you need you know there's there's you know if you look at the greatest athletes they had the greatest coaches you look at the football team the greatest football teams have the greatest coaches so you need that as well jesus had those people in his life as well and you know so um i have one so you can just look for people like that you know and get them go to them submit yourself to them you know i like it when people Co correct me chastise me you know i really like it because i learn i just get better you know when people say ah, man, the way you said that thing is not good enough or you know so I, I, you know next time you know it makes me careful about you know maybe the way you say this the way you say that and all that so very 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 crucial now if you want to employ the services of a professional coach okay yes i offer those services like i said you can talk to kike and she would Give you the necessary details you need but if you don't want to you can find somebody in your area find somebody in your circle that can at least if the person is not a coach the person can start by being an accountability partner first an accountability partner and then you can connect with people who are so popular and make them your virtual coaches tony robbins you know consume his materials and uh, if there's a professor you like if there's this person you like, that person you like, you just, just begin to copiously consume their literature. And then let me say this, please, in passing them. You know, when I set a goal for myself, you know, the year I started neuroscience, I watched 200 TED Talks on neuroscience, 200 TED Talks. A, talk, a TED Talk is like 15 minutes or so. You know what? As from six o'clock, I wasn't talking to anybody. 6 p.m., I wasn't talking to anybody. And I told myself that coming, eh? You have been talking to people all your life. What has it gotten you? Okay, face your work first. Face your work for the first time in your life. So from six o'clock, I wasn't talking to anybody. Between six and 12, that's six hours. A TED talk is 20 minutes. I told myself, if I lock myself up in a room for six hours, there's no how. I will find 20 minutes for one TED talk. So I, I put in my place a, 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 an environment of exclusion. Do you understand? Excluding things. Just put myself in that environment. And, you know, I was at Kirikiri today. It will amaze you that people in Kirikiri are, are scoring 300 in jam because there's no TV, there's no social media. I saw inmates that are passing jam that are going for degree courses in that there is a university in Kirikiri. I'm sorry, I said Kirikiri, Ikoi, Ikoi prison. Because environment matters. When you're in an environment that there's no TV, there's no Instagram, there's no smartphone, you focus. I know a woman who memorized the Bible in jail because there was the only thing that which there was was the Bible. So I live my life like that, that, you know, I exclude a lot of things, you know. So if I put myself, when they bring a child to me that is struggling with attention, I said, very good. Let's keep the child in a room for six hours. Mm -hmm. It may not even be six hours. It may be just one hour, a room alone, you know, no TV, nothing. Just start there. When the child is tired of being tired, he will go, he will, he will look at his book. It's true. When a child is tired of being tired, when you are tired of being tired, you will be interested in even what you are not interested in. You know, when when the available, when the desirable is not available, the available becomes desirable. So when you are just tired, but when you are not, when in an environment where there are so many distractions, uh, uh, 
uh, you will never find what you, you should do. But when you're in an environment that is, you know, they call it a dry and thirsty land, you know, that is devoid of all those innocent amusements, you now focus on what you need to focus on. So for children that struggle with attention, I say, okay, you know what? Attention is repetition. Attention is repetition. Uh, repetition gets your attention, it grows your attention, and it granulates your attention. So if you repeat a thing, you'll be attentive to it. When we hear songs on TV, on radio regularly, we become attentive to it. We begin to even like those songs. We begin to even sing them when we are not, when we are not even thinking of singing them. We become, become, become just subconscious of singing those songs because we repeated it. So when you put yourself in an environment when there's only one thing, singularity leads to repetition. Singularity leads to repetition. If there's only one thing to do, you'll be doing that one thing repeated. So singularity, repetition, attention, and then attention gives you energy, the energy you need. Once again, singularity, repetition, attention, eh, and then energy. So, wow. so thank you. And with that, we have come to the end of this um, amazing webinar. You have come is active on his Instagram page at Adekomi Pollution on Instagram is constantly, please follow his YouTube channel. Hey, that is another thing. He didn't talk about that one. That is another thing. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, He's always a... dropping things on YouTube, like hot, hot, as in a hot. When he's out from this is exclusion, he comes out and he bombards us with it. So please, you can't um, afford to meet it. We've dropped the feedback form in the chat room feedback is a gift please fill the feedback form and let's know so as we come to the end of this amazing amazing webinar can we just have two people tell us what your key take home is alex i saw you dropping let's hear your voice from canada ice canada let's hear you thanks for showing up she actually showed up very early let's hear you unmute your mic can you unmute your mic where you are How's the webinar been? You know me, I like to put people on spotlight. Now people cannot come and be hiding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I wasn't hiding. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Kami. That, that was very, very practical. And um, so many things to, 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 to note there. So I've... Uh, I